a bare Saturn. 100,000 years from now, Saturn will lose its beautiful rings. It'll happen gradually over time as the planet's colossal gravity pulls rocks and ice from this belt floating around it. They'll all eventually fall and get crushed and burned by Saturn's atmosphere. Well, how rude! The ring system is in the middle of its life cycle, so we're incredibly lucky we got to see it in its full glory. The most frightening supernova The WR-104 star will burst into a supernova in 3,000 years. This star is 75,000 light-years away from us, and the blast won't touch us at all. But there is a small chance it'll also produce a gamma-ray burst in the process. If this stream of energy happens to aim right at us, it will negatively affect life on Earth. Good news? Scientists say that's very unlikely. Colliding moons The moons of Uranus are part of a highly unstable system. Some of them have orbits that cross paths. Uranus already has two rings of debris from past collisions of its natural satellites. Desdemona and Cressida will crash into each other in the next million years and produce new rings. A star too close for comfort. The rogue Gliese 710 star is approaching our solar system, and it will get just one light year away in 1.3 million years. This won't have a major impact on the planets, but it could disturb the so-called Oort cloud, which surrounds our solar system and is full of comets. From Earth, the star will look like the brightest planets we see now, and we'll see many more comets in the skies. The closest star to ever go supernova Within a few million years, the Spica star, which is only 240 light-years from us, will burst into a supernova. Supernova are a problem for life when they're three times closer than that, but the supernova itself will shine in the Earth's skies as bright as a full moon. A time capsule for future generations The Logios-1 satellite was launched back in 1976 to gather information about the exact shape of the Earth and tectonic plate movement. But it also contained information about civilization on Earth at the time. It'll re-enter our atmosphere in 8.4 million years. If humanity is around then, they'll learn how life on Earth was in our time. Well, at least how it was some 40 years ago. Rings for Mars Mars' moon, Phobos, orbits really close to the surface, and it continues to get two feet closer every century. 50 million years from now, it'll collide with Mars, resulting in a massive amount of debris going into orbit and forming a ring system around the red planet. Oh, can't wait for that. Days on Earth will get longer. No, really? 1.4 billion years ago, the Moon was much closer to our planet. It made the Earth rotate faster, so the day was only 18 hours. The Moon is continuously moving away from Earth. In 180 million years, we'll gain one extra hour. In a little over 2 billion years, a day on Earth will be 36 hours long. No more solar eclipses. 600 million years into the future, the Moon will move away from the Earth too far to cover the Sun during eclipses. Those will become ancient relics. The Sun will get too bright. It'll take about a billion years for the Sun to raise its luminosity by 10%. This will be devastating for planets in the solar system, and life on Earth won't be possible beyond this point. By then, our species will likely have found a new planetary home. The Sun will swallow the inner planets. In 5 billion years, the Sun will begin to evolve into a red giant, growing hundreds of times its current size. It'll swell up so much, it will eventually engulf Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. The new Goldilocks habitable zone may shift to the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn. This process will take a bit under 3 billion years until the Sun reaches its maximum size. After that, our star will shrink into a white dwarf. The most epic event ever Around the same time our Sun is swelled up, the nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, will come too close to the Milky Way. If we could watch our galactic neighbor at this time, it'll get larger and larger as it approaches. Then, the two galaxies will start to merge. Bright blue stars will burst into life. New constellations will form. 
the two spiral galaxies will now be a single giant elliptical one. Wow, I've set an alarm on my smartphone so I don't miss it. Humanity will once again visit the moon. The mission is planned for 2024. In this crew, we'll see the first women step on the moon. The main goal is to establish a lunar base for continued research that will help NASA prepare for an upcoming mission to Mars. NASA has been planning a crewed flight to the Red Planet set for the 2030s. Robotic rovers did a good job exploring the Martian surface. But astronauts will have to dig deeper to find evidence of water and any fossils proving microscopic life was once possible on our planetary neighbor. New data on Earth-like planets Since its launch in 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope has discovered lots of exoplanets orbiting distant stars. Some of them have an Earth-like mass, composition, and orbits. NASA plans to launch a new generation of telescopes in the 2040s. They'll help us find real twins of our planet and even get pictures of their surfaces. The return of Halley's Comet It'll be another 41 years before we once again see the most famous comet in the sky. Halley's visits us every 75 years, so some will manage to see it twice in their lifetime. The longest solar eclipse 166 years from now, I'll still be around then, <laughs> the sun will go dark for 7 minutes and 29 seconds. This is pretty close to the predicted maximum. It'll also be the longest eclipse human civilization has ever witnessed in its 10,000 years. Arrival of the most notorious asteroid 1950 DA was once the most probable candidate among near-Earth objects we know to actually strike the planet. Fortunately, the chance was later estimated to be not even a tenth of a percent. It'll most likely pass by on March 16, 2880, mark your calendars, and it'll become a solid evidence that we're safe for a while. The asteroid is more than a mile in diameter, enough to take out life on a planet. A new North Star? The Earth spins like a top. Watch one of these toys closely, and you'll see how its tip starts to draw circles in the air. The Earth's axis, an imaginary line going through the poles, goes full circle once every 26,000 years. It points at different stars along the way, thus changing the North Star. By the year 3000, the Gamma Cephei star will share this title with Polaris as the Earth's axis will point right between them. The first near-Earth supernova. Antares is the 15th brightest star in the night skies. It's also an old red supergiant, 12 times larger than the Sun. Stars this massive age to a point where they collapse in on themselves, producing huge supernovas. For Antares, this will happen just 10,000 years from now, which is nothing for a 12-million-year-old star. The resulting burst will be too far away to affect life on this planet negatively. But the light show will be visible here on Earth even during the day. Message to the Universe Delivered Arecibo is the encoded message describing humanity, life on Earth, and the advancement of our scientific knowledge. It was broadcast from the Arecibo radio telescope and aimed at the center of the M13 cluster 25,000 light years away from us. In 25,000 years, it'll finally reach its destination. A new closest star About 36,000 years from now, the Ross 248 star will become our new closest neighbor. It'll be just three light years away from us and overtake the title from Proxima Centauri, which is a bit more than four light years away. Ross 248 will remain the nearest star for around 9,000 years and then move away once again. So, you didn't like the neighborhood or what? The first interstellar human-made object In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will reach a point within 1.5 light-years of the Gliese 445 star. It successfully reached interstellar space in 2013. But unfortunately, it won't be able to power up any of its systems somewhere beyond the year 2025. Voyager 1 has a message too, 
a recording of greetings in 55 languages, music from classical to rock and roll, and sounds of the Earth's wildlife. Why do we love Saturn so much? Right, because we love its amazing rings. The planet stands out in the solar system because of them. The major rings have a diameter of 170,000 miles, yet their thickness does not exceed 330 feet. Saturn's slowest outermost ring spins at about 37,000 miles per hour. It's slower than the rotation of Saturn itself. But did you know that Saturn was ringless for most of its history? Let's find out how they were formed. Using Cassini's final plunge into the planet, researchers could estimate the ring's mass, 33 billion billion pounds. Further, they have determined that the rings were between 10 to 100 million years old, much younger than the planet itself. The thing is that the rings only look solid. They are made of billions of rock and ice chunks. They are primarily tiny ones, looking like grains of sugar to those as large as a house, or even as mountains. The innermost chunks of ice and rock shoot through space at about 52,000 miles per hour. There are mysterious spokes in its rings. It seems they form and disperse within a couple of hours. And these spokes might consist of electrically charged sheets of tiny particles formed when small meteors hit the rings, or maybe electron beams from Saturn's lightning. One theory says Saturn's rings have formed all that extra material that remained after Saturn began, which is a material that couldn't create a moon. There's also a theory that says there was Theia, a Mars-sized planet that collided with Earth about 4.5 billion years ago. Lighter crust parts ended up in space during the impact, whereas its denser core stayed behind. But in the case of Saturn, all that debris perhaps didn't put a new moon together, but it formed rings many people today recognize this planet for. Another theory is that rings formed from dust and debris of a moon that ended up destroyed by this big impact, maybe by an asteroid or comet. Or perhaps the rings are there because once a moon fell apart because of the tidal forces coming from its parent planet itself. If these rings formed at the same period as Saturn did, they would have had more than 4 billion years to collect a bit of debris and dirt coming from micrometeorite collisions. But these rings mainly consist of water ice, no dirt at all, which means they're younger than expected. And the nature of this ring system tells us a thing or two about Saturn's fuzzy inside. Fuzzy means its core is like sludge. The helium and hydrogen in Saturn mix with more and more rock and ice over time, the closer you go to the planet's core. It's similar to what you see in our oceans. The deeper you go, the level of saltiness increases. But the rings may disappear in the far future. Rings are generally more common than we think. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own ring system. But not every planet has the same ones. Saturn has a fascinating halo, and definitely the most spectacular rings, true. Others mostly have rings made of dust and rocky particles, and not just planets. Other space bodies can have rings, like the asteroid called Chiricla. But even though the gas giants of our solar system have rings, rocky, or so-called terrestrial ones, don't. And one theory says it might have been that way because gas planets in the outer area of the solar system protected those rocky ones that formed in the inner solar system from all those collisions that possibly could have formed rings around them. Or it could be because gas giants are way bigger and their enormous volume allows them to have a ring system that can remain stable. And what if Earth had rings in the past too? Maybe in the time of the big collision when our moon could have been formed. Now to some more cool things happening in our solar system. Pluto, a tiny dwarf planet at the edge of our solar system. Also the one we used to call a planet has a pretty bizarre atmosphere. No one expected to see a haze there go as high as 1,000 miles. That means it rises higher above the surface of the atmosphere of our home planet. And the atmosphere on Pluto has around 20 layers. They're more compact and way cooler than scientists expected. And tons of nitrogen gas escape Pluto by the hour, 
But the dwarf planet still finds a way to constantly create new supplies of all the nitrogen it had lost. One theory says it probably produces these supplies through geological activity. Our moon is pretty peaceful, but that's not something we can say for Io, one of Jupiter's moons. This one has hundreds of volcanoes. It's the moon with the most volcanic activity in our solar system. Io sends plumes of sulfur up to an incredible 190 miles into its atmosphere. Its volcanoes emit many particles and gases into the space right next to Jupiter, every single second. Its eruptive activities happen because of Jupiter's mighty gravitational forces and magnetic field. The insides of Io tense up and relax all the time, depending on how close or far away it is from Jupiter. And that's why it generates enough energy to have such an eruptive nature. Speaking of volcanoes, Mars has one larger than the whole state of Hawaii. At first, you'd probably say it's a quiet and peaceful planet. But once upon a time, enormous volcanoes dominated its surface. Yup, that includes a well-known Olympus Mons, the largest volcano ever found in our entire solar system, 374 miles across, comparable to the size of Arizona. Olympus Mons is 16 miles high, three times the height of our tallest mountain, Mount Everest. And by its volume, this volcano is 100 times bigger than the largest one on Earth. Mars can have such big volcanoes because its gravity is significantly weaker than the one on our home planet. Also, the crust on Earth moves all the time, unlike the Martian crust. Do you know how the Hawaiian Islands formed? A hot spot in the mantle created a chain of volcanoes in the crust floating above it. A Martian volcano may grow bigger because its surface isn't moving, so a volcano could build up for a longer time in just one spot. Miranda is one of the most bizarre moons in the outer part of our solar system. It's a shadowy moon that orbits Uranus, with many craters, sharp ridges, and similar disruptions on its surface. Usually, this type of relief tells a certain area used to have a lot of volcanic activities. But that wasn't the case with Miranda. Also, this moon is way too small to generate tectonic activities. Another element that could form this type of surface. One theory says the gravitational force from Uranus could have caused the push-pull action, something that made all these bumps on Miranda's surface. We'll have to send another spacecraft to find out what was happening there. We are all made of stardust. 97% of atoms we're made of are the same as the material our galaxy consists of. The building blocks of life is a term we use for a group of elements that are vital for life on Earth. And stars have these elements too, but in different proportions. For instance, we are 65% oxygen by our mass, whereas elements we measure in space, like the spectra of stars, have less than 1% of oxygen. So, Mercury is already the smallest in our solar system in the planet category, excluding some other bodies like the dwarf planet Pluto. And now it looks like it's still shrinking. It's the second densest after our planet, but it's getting denser over time. Researchers thought the Earth was the only planet in our solar system with tectonic activities for a long time. And now we know Mercury is tectonically active too. Messenger spacecraft managed to map the whole planet. Scientists realize the planet is full of fault scarps, some cliff-like landforms. Since these are relatively small, they're probably young, and Mercury is still contracting even 4.5 billion years after our solar system was formed. This planet's called the jewel of the solar system. Made up mostly of gases, it could float on water should you find a reservoir 75,000 miles across and just as deep. But what makes the planet so recognizable is its beautiful rings, gray, tan, and beige. They consist of dust, rocks, and ice. Some bits are as tiny as grains of sand, others as large as skyscrapers. The planet I'm talking about is Saturn, and right now, Earth is hurtling toward it at breakneck speed. It all started on a regular day over half a year ago. All of a sudden, Earth changed the course it had been following for several billion years. But instead of rushing towards the Sun, it started to move away from the star. On second thoughts, it might be for the better. We've got more time to find a solution. Earth used to move around the Sun at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour. 
for some mysterious reason, when it left its orbit, the speed remained the same. It means we're going to cover 746 million miles separating our planet from Saturn within a year and three months. At first, no one realized what had happened. But a couple of hours later, it became obvious. Despite the panic that engulfed Earth's inhabitants, nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. But all too soon, it started to get colder and colder. Astronomers' forecasts were pessimistic. People started to leave their homes at the poles, move closer to the equator. Most plant and animal species were having a hard time. Some of them went extinct, even though we were trying to save them in greenhouses and special conservation parks. The sky changed dramatically. In a week, we could see Mars clearly. It looked like a big reddish sphere hanging low over our heads. Jupiter became as bright as the moon. Once Earth was as far away from the sun as Mars, days became twice dimmer than they used to be. At first, our planet's atmosphere was acting as a barrier between people and space. That's why we didn't feel the cold immediately. But seven days later, everyone who dared to leave their home had to be cocooned in heavy winter clothing. By that time, the temperatures had already dropped down to minus 145 degrees Fahrenheit. It got even colder once our planet passed Mars and hurried through the asteroid belt. It's been one of the most dangerous regions on our way so far. Yes, people could admire awesome meteorite showers streaking the sky. But several space bodies managed to get through the Earth's atmosphere. They slammed into the ground, flattening mountains and leaving behind gigantic craters. They caused tsunamis and triggered earthquakes. Right now, most of the planet, including the oceans, has already turned into an icy desert. There's a lack of food and natural resources. We've built underground towns and tunnels connecting them. Our scientists work day and night to find a way out of this situation. If they don't, that's what's going to happen. The closer our planet will be to Saturn, the more the ringed planet will loom over the horizon and the larger it'll look. Soon, it'll already shine brighter than the full moon. The massive yellowish-brown orb will be visible even during the day, but it'll look especially impressive at night. Instead of sleeping, millions of people will spend hours watching Saturn grow larger and larger. One day, the distance between the two planets will become the same as the distance between Earth and Mars used to be. Saturn's disk will be about a quarter the size of the full moon. Its rings will be as large as two-thirds of our natural satellite. Soon after that, our planet's speed will start to increase under the influence of Saturn's gravitational pull. The ringed planet is nine times wider than Earth, and its mass is almost 100 times greater. That's why, instead of moving at a speed of 29 miles per second, we'll be dashing through space at almost 40 miles per second. That's 2,400 times the average car speed. Saturn's gravity will influence the Moon more than that of Earth. In no time, we'll lose our satellite. It'll get catapulted into outer space, likely to go into an elliptical orbit around the Sun. If Earth wasn't about to crash into Saturn in the nearest future, the Moon could one day cross paths with our planet again. No good would come out of such an encounter. But what's happening on Saturn's side of things? Saturn is one of the largest planets in the solar system, second only to Jupiter. Even though the rings surrounding the planet are huge, they're rather thin, less than a mile thick. Still, the main rings are large enough to stretch from Earth to the Moon. But how did the planet get these breathtaking accessories? Beyond the outer edge of the main rings, A, B, and C, there's something astronomers call the F-ring. Several million years old, it's the weirdest one. This constantly shifting ring is made up of icy material and is incredibly complex. Its curves, twists, and clumps of brighter substance make it look as if it's braided. Saturn has more than 50 confirmed moons. Two of them, Pandora and Prometheus, flank the F-ring on either side. They weave outside and inside the ring, acting like shepherds. They herd ice particles into a 60-mile-thick band. But why are they performing this elaborate dance? No one knows. What scientists do know is that when Saturn's rings were evolving, icy material clumped together and formed moonlets. Some of them grew and turned into the planet's largest moons. But two of them collided. That's how the mysterious ring F appeared. 
if the moonlets had only been made up of small, icy particles, the space collision would have left a ring and nothing else. But they had dense, rocky cores. Those remained intact and turned into Pandora and Prometheus. People don't have any evidence Saturn's ever collided with another space body. Our Earth might be the first. But before crashing into the planet itself, we'll have to get through its rings, including the Ring F. And no, our planet won't just punch a hole in them. Saturn's rings are made of small particles. Earth's gravity will start to pull some of them out of their orbit once we're close enough. It'll result in a long plume that will reach our planet. And later, when we squeeze through, the cloud of icy particles will drag after Earth. It won't have enough power to rid Saturn of its rings completely, though. They'll continue to move around their home planet, but their orbits will change and become more elongated. There will be no more stunning bands. Over time, the rings could probably settle down again, but Earth won't give them such a chance. The collision with our planet won't leave Saturn unscathed. If there's still a possibility to sneak a peek at the sky, people will be able to see the rings disappear into nothingness, but not for long. Soon, the largest chunks of rock will start hitting the surface of our planet, leaving behind lifeless land dotted with craters. In the worst-case scenario, Earth might even collide with one of Saturn's numerous moons. But let's imagine we've passed through this region in one piece, and now our planet's very close to Saturn. The gas giant might seem airy, but there's no way Earth can fly through the huge sphere and leave from the other side. Gravity is what keeps all that gas together. The very gravity that make our planet speed up. The closer it is to the much bigger space body, the stronger the pull is. It'll cause the fault lines on Earth to rupture. It'll also set off powerful volcanic eruptions all over the world. And then, with enormous force, our planet will crash into Saturn. The planet's atmospheres will get compressed. This will cause a dramatic and fast temperature rise, and in no time, the air will be on fire. Scientists claim that Saturn's core is dense, made up of iron and nickel, and surrounded by a rocky layer. But we'll never make it there. Earth will burn in the bigger planet's atmosphere after being literally torn apart. Our beautiful, blue-green world will turn into billions of trillions of tons of vaporized rock. Pity. Maybe Earth will become yet another Saturn's ring, instead of the ones it's ruined. Sounds grim, I know. Yeah, we can't save Earth from Saturn, but that's only a bad dream. So maybe we take that effort and save us from a real threat, climate change. Eh, just saying.